Well, after the scandal that hit Canada's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Quadriga, Canadian regulators have proposed a framework that aims to ensure crypto platforms are registered as investment dealers and have policies and procedures in place to manage and mitigate risks, including how you manage and keep the assets under control. We're joined now by Cole Diamond, CEO of CoinSquare. Thanks so much for being with us. Good morning. Thanks so, for so are these regulations that are, are being put forward, are they in direct response to what happened with Quadriga? Well, we started engaging with the, the appropriate regulators about 15 months ago. Um, and so the process really started then. And, and 15 months ago was at the high of the crypto asset market. So they were rushing to try and get in, get a good understanding of what was going on in the market, what they needed to do about it. And here we are 15 months later, where just a month or so ago, you had this Quadriga issue, which obviously accelerated the speed in which they got to this paper that came out yesterday. And so I guess what Kajiga highlighted is that there was really no regulatory oversight. So there was no recourse in the event, uh, what turned out, people were unable to get their assets out of the exchange because it turns out that they were being kept with by one person who passed away. And so you weren't able to get access to it. Does, does the regulation, I guess, now fully address that issue and, and each of those um, you know, different things that, that prevented people from, from really having the safety of knowing that their assets are secure? Yeah, the paper that came out yesterday addresses the main concerns in the market. And remember that we're dealing with a maturing market. And so there's, there's going to be a lot that regulators are going to have to learn over time. But they certainly, they didn't just take the Quadriga situation. They've really taken a really good look at the market. And I think that leadership has actually been at the OSC level, trying to understand what they need to do f primarily to protect investors, but hopefully also to try and create opportunities for Canadian businesses in this space. Because if we can lead as Canadians in trying to tackle the regulatory uh, environment for uh, digital currency assets, um, there's an enormous opportunity for Canadian businesses like CoinSquare to thrive, not just within Canada, but internationally. So this is unbelievable information that came out yesterday. So you said it's a maturing market, and I want to understand why you say it's maturing and perhaps not dying. We have a, a Bitcoin page on our website, and this is just anecdotal. Last year, we had, for the, for the month in January, over 300,000 people were clicking on that Bitcoin page last year in the height uh, of the market. Same month, a year later, only 65,000. Are, is just interest dwindling in this asset class? I and mean, what makes you think it's a maturing versus a fad? So it's not that the interest is dwindling. It's that there's a baseline of interest that keeps growing year over year, higher and higher. Now, you're taking a very specific time period and saying 300,000 people that given month or two when the market was going totally bananas. Uh, you, you started seeing a high amount of activity to, to that, uh, that web page. But at the end of the day, you're seeing year-over-year -year growth in this market. It's not going anywhere. Regulators, What's that measured by? Users, trading activity? Take a look at the price of Bitcoin year-over-year over, year over the last 10 years since its inception. Right? The highs are higher, the lows are lower. Or sorry, the highs are higher and the lows are higher. So you've got the market maturing. You've got more Bitcoin wallets today than there have ever been. There's actually more, just about as many Bitcoin wallets internationally as there are Canadian dollar wallets and bank accounts. Okay? So why does the Canadian dollar have any value? Because you and I agree that it has value. Why does Bitcoin have value? Because maybe not you and I, but you know, me and others agree that it has value, well, almost like any other asset. So you've got to see the market mature. Um, it's only 10 years old. It, it, these are new asset classes, and there are different classes within the assets. But certainly, digital assets are going nowhere. Blockchain technology is going nowhere. And, uh, and that's obvious by the major institutions you're seeing come into the space. And that's now obvious by what regulators are trying to do to come in to try and create a framework for it. And they're doing a terrific job. And so do you think that that framework will help to accelerate the pace of growth where previously having no regulation kept it sort of on the fringes? Does having regulation help to usher it more into the mainstream? I think it'll help a lot with institutions coming in because it'll set a framework for what needs to happen in order for businesses like CoinSquare to have the right structure in place to enable institutions to come in. Not just sales and trade execution, but most importantly, custody of assets. And that's really at the, at the core of what they put out yesterday and the biggest concern. And obviously, that's also tied to the Quadriga situation. But I mean, retail investors that are in this space are more interested in the opportunities from a wider perspective that the space offers, knowing that they can come in early, returns can be really uh, meaningful, uh, but institutions need that proper framework to play in. So certainly it'll help move along the institutional interest in the space, which a lot of companies like CoinSquare were making a lot of those moves to bring them in anyway. 
don't don't we also need to see just a, a broader use case? Like, what do we need these assets for? Like, yes, we can uh, transact without middlemen, and yes, we can do it perhaps in a more secure way. That's been the case over the lifetime of these assets, and yet we're still not seeing it percolate into the mainstream. Does there need to be another use case that emerges out of these cryptocurrencies to prove that they are useful beyond the two things that they can do that nothing else can do? Yeah, this is like the most misunderstood market ever. So the use cases will come, they'll be plentiful. There won't be one or two, there'll be thousands. When you say cryptocurrency, it's a scary name. Yeah. Okay, because almost nobody knows what it really means. And all it means is digital assets, which means all, it, all that is is assets that have been digitized. So any asset that's got you know, a barcode or a number associated with it that can be put into a token and therefore tracked in a more secure environment on the blockchain. Because when it's on the blockchain, that is the most secure way to track anything in the world. Okay? But you've got multiple asset classes that exist within digital assets. So what's really odd is that you see the entire cryptocurrency market go up at the same time and the entire market go down. But that's like in the real asset world, that would be like seeing uh, German bonds go up at the same rate as Brazilian housing market at the same rate as Canadian equities. It makes no sense. Mm. Okay? So you've got all these different asset classes that exist within digital assets, which is what cryptocurrency is. Now, we all know Bitcoin. That is a an international currency. There are payment um, uh, facilities available through it. There's a breadth of other opportunities and technology that will come as a result of that early birth. But we're still very early stage. You'll see a lot of use cases throughout this year, next year, and you'll see this market thrive in the future. What are the indicators that you look at that make you so sure about this? Because you are very much in the space. Is it the development community and the you know thousands of developers that the remain committed? What are what are the things under the service that uh, you know someone in the mainstream just doesn't really see every day? Yeah, it's not just believers. I mean, you've got an instance where HSBC is now tested at scale the ability to do foreign exchange settlement on the blockchain, okay, using a tokenized mechanism. So now all of a sudden it's real for Forex, which by the way is like the most antiquated system out there, okay. So you've now got that use case that's real, which is fantastic. You've got JP Morgan. What they say, and, and there's a lot of confusing statements around JP Morgan, like Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin's a fraud, and then all of a sudden JP Morgan has their own coin. But their coin is totally different than what Bitcoin is. So they're leveraging blockchain technology, digital assets to launch something for payment services, okay? So all these little pieces, which are actually fairly significant pieces of adoption that are starting to happen all around the world, or at least being tested in beta, okay, are starting to prove that there's a lot of validity in this market. You've got, you obviously even see Facebook now yeah. likely coming into the market fairly soon, and, and a lot of additional positive uh, um, moves that are gonna come from some major international players that'll be announced very shortly that we're aware of. All right, do you wanna name those? I can't. Okay. <laughs> I thought I would try. Yeah. Cole, thank you so much for joining us. That's Cole Diamond, CEO of CoinSquare.